this is my 16 gallon water box in the kitchen and i'm guessing most of you seen it oh there's one of the little juvenile albino quarries there's two in here there's six adults there's another one that's going to end up in here in the next few days i think there is Benelope von Schwitz. She's blowing a bubble nest. And there's a bunch of cherry shrimp in here. And there's also, uh, I don't know, 10 or 11 neon tetras. And three, what, clown plecos. And a couple auto synclus. I think three of those also. And plants. And one of my least favorite plants is this green hair algae. And today I was watching a video from Simply Veda, and um, she was talking about her Lord of the Rings tank, her Fanghorn Forest tank, and the algae, and she reached out to Dan's fish, and he suggested green leaf algae eater shrimp. I think that's what they were called. Uh, and he did a test between those, a mono shrimp and some fish. Um, and I'm thinking, okay, great. I watched, uh, after Simply Betta's video, I went over to Dan's fish site and watched that video and it was interesting. And it looks like those, uh, green leaf algae to shrimp definitely did the trick, but the Amano shrimp were right behind it. So I ended up because the green leaf shrimp from Dan's were, God, they're 750 a piece. For four, it's 30 bucks for four. And if I did my arithmetic right, a mono shrimp are cheaper. And they were a day behind as far as the speed of devouring a wad of this green hair algae. I'll put the link to Dan's fish in there so you can watch that. So I ended up ordering, um, it was seven plus one, a mono shrimp from Swimming Creatures in Fullerton, California. I bought from them before. In fact, that's where the red cherry shrimp in this tank originally came from. So they should be here in the next few days and I will unbox them in this video and then uh, we will put them in here and they should be fine. They shouldn't outcompete or anything with the, uh, the red cherries, but hopefully they will be the solution to this nasty green air algae. I you, know, you can see some right, let me get my finger wherever it is, right there, right? There's this big wad all across the Christmas moss. I've hit it with uh, hydrogen peroxide, that works, but it's just, it's not working enough. Uh, and I try to pull it out, but I pull a lot of the, the Christmas moss with it because it's so entangled. And I also pulled wads of this stuff out on the other side of the tank back here, on the, the sink side. And I, I pulled out a big handful of this stuff yesterday. So anyway, We'll uh, unbox those shrimp and then we'll come back in, a, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe a week or so and see if they've done the trick. Okay, well, the Amano shrimp got here today. And notice how in big bold letters it says live fish here. Uh huh. Well, the post office and all their infinite wisdom thought to just leave them down in the parcel locker. Usually they drop them off at the front door. In fact, they knocked it at the front door, ring the doorbell, and hand deliver them. But this time, Whoever's on holiday relief mode decided they're just going to uh, leave them in the parcel locker. So let's see. So these Amano shrimp, I'm hoping do the trick that those uh, green leaf algae eater shrimps are supposed to do that I saw from Simply Betta's video and she was getting those at Dan's Fish Room, but they were just too damned expensive. So I thought, oh my gosh, they're using what I'm using. I need to take this outside and open this out there. I'll bring the bag back in because this is that same uh, cellulose fiber that dusty and gets everywhere, but it makes a good insulator. And we'll go through this in a minute, this card. So I just left all that stuff in the, in the garage. Now there was a heat pack in it. It's not hot. Now it's 82 degrees, so it's not cold. So I guess it's as warm as it needs to be. And then this is from Swimming Creatures. They're in Fullerton, California. And I have ordered from them several times now. And I've gotten a mono shrimp from them before. And they always ship in these little insulated, these foil insulated bags. So 
pair of scissors or just carefully cut through the glue here. I don't want to cut the shrimp bag and get drain that all over the kitchen floor. That would suck. I don't think uh, Mrs. Garage Aquatics would like that very much. She's pretty tolerant of my crazy hobby, of our crazy hobby. So let's see, there they are. And on the top, how do you claim DOA? When your package arrives, please snap a picture of the unopened bag. Make sure any deceased fish are visible. Quickly remove the deceased ones and start drip acclimation, acclimating the live ones. And a 714 number because, like I said, they are in Fullerton. Your voice matters. Help us grow. Uh, they've got a brick and mortar place now. They used to just be online. And I would like to visit them sometime. Your package arrives. So, and they're using those, whatever they call those hooks. Um, these uh, staple things. I don't know if you guys can see that, that metal staple thing. I know my buddy Jeff Pelham likes those. Let's see if uh, how this works. I would much rather have a pair of scissors to do that, but this is what I've got. I still don't want to catch that inside bag. Once again, that would suck. Here we go. So there should be seven, what was it? Seven plus one, I think. And they use that green plastic stuff, and I started using that too, because Glenn at GB Shrimp told me if you, I was putting uh, guppy grass in with my shrimp, and he said uh, plants take up oxygen in the dark. So I can't really tell if there's dead shrimp in here. They're small. I see several swimming around. Oh, it's leaking too. So I'm going to need some sort of a. a a water removal apparatus. Something's leaking. I think the bag's leaking. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, I can't tell if there's seven or not in there, but I'm gonna get the bucket out here. Got handy two gallon bucket. And I think what I'm gonna do is uh, just put them in the bucket. I don't see any. There's one in that green plastic, and I can't tell if it's... No, it's moving. So I think we're good as far as DOAs or not. Uh, shrimp. A mono shrimp. Oh. Yep. Now, that video was all about testing between a mono shrimp, uh, those green leaf algae-eating shrimp that nobody seems to know what they're really called. Uh, here's that plasticky stuff. I just bought a whole bunch of this. Uh, and it's red. <laughs> so, but that's what I'm shipping shrimp in now. Um, and then, uh, and I can't remember the species of the fish. I'll go look for it. I'll even link that dance fish video in the bottom of this. For, I think about three days, the green leaf algae eating shrimp was the winner. Let me take you off the tripod and show you what's swimming around in there. And uh, the Amano shrimp were right behind it. And, and so I figure for the price difference that he was selling those shrimp for $7.50 a piece, 30 bucks for four. And they were pricey, uh, plus shipping. And these, it was, uh, I think it was 30 bucks for seven plus one, and there are way more than that in there. I don't know how many there are. They won't hold still long enough. But there's gotta be about a dozen in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's like a racetrack. They're just going in circles. So anyway, now I'm gonna start the drip acclimation. I'm sure most of you have seen me do that before. And if you haven't, well, I'll show you how I set it up. Well, anyway, I think there's 10 in there. And I just shot a still, tried to count it. And this is my drip rig. It's a piece of airline about two feet long. Make it as long as you need. And at one end, I've got a suction cup and that's gonna go inside the tank. And then a little ways down, another suction cup. And ideally that goes to the outside of the tank. It's not necessary, but it's there. And then about halfway down the line, I have an air valve. And then I've got this little clip on there. Sometimes it comes in handy to hold uh, this end on the edge of the bucket. So this end goes in the tank. Now I did this in a tank with guppy fry and a guppy fry went right up there. So, you know, some fish are less bright than others. So you want to start a siphon. 
And there we go, we got a real stream going. So what I'm gonna do is just cut it down to uh, get it just dripping. Hence the phrase drip, drip acclimation. Not like that, that's probably good. And I'll just leave that in there. And I'll let this volume of water at least double. Um, well, let's see what they say. I think this is their drip acclimation uh, instructions. It's a nice postcard, shiny. Um, here, we'll put it here. And then hit the pause button. And you can read everything it says. And then this is the other side. This is their information. And again, hit the pause button. You can read the whole th damn thing. So we'll come back to this in a, in a while and I'll, we'll see how the drip's going. All right, well, there we are. It's been, God, I don't know, a couple hours and it's way more than double the volume. And this water has a lot of tannins in it from this big chunk of Mopani that you really can't see uh, in the tank itself. But when you pull it out into a white bucket, it's very noticeable. So what I'm gonna do is net the shrimp out, put them in the tank and then top off the water level and add a little tap water conditioner to it instead of pouring all this water back in, which I could probably do also. All right, here we go. And I got a towel to pick up all the drips on the floor afterwards. I'm sure now they're being tough to get. Okay, and they jump like little cockroaches. There's one. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see. They're small. There's three total, four, just keep Vanellope away from them because she will, she's gone after the cherry shrimp in the past. So let me put them somewhere else. Five, you leave them alone. Don't make me come after you. That's five, six, we'll dump them off behind her now. They're fast. Seven, eight. Wish I could breed these like I do with the cherry shrimp. The females will get buried and they will set little immatures called zoos. They're like plankton, but those need to go into brackish water. And here's 10. That's it. So let's get you back off the tripod. I don't know that we'll ever see any of these right now. Yeah, not a clue, but this is the tank they live in. And hopefully remember the, the whole idea of this was to eat this hair algae all over the top of my Christmas moss and growing in the Christmas moss and growing in this uh, hydrocotyl Japan and everywhere else in this tank, it, it pops up. So anyway, uh, we'll do a follow up. I'll put this video up now after introducing the Amano shrimp along with all the red cherry shrimp and uh, the quarries. Clown Plecos, couple Autosynclus, and Vanellope von Schweetz. Uh, oh, and then all the Neon Tetras. So hopefully they'll be all right in here. Well, then it occurred to me that in Dan's videos, all he had in the tank was that, I think it was a 14 gram clump of uh, hair algae and the algae eater. And in, in uh, the three cases, it was that green leaf algae eating shrimp, uh, Amano shrimp, and uh, Florida flagfish, I think is what, what they're called. Uh, so I put the uh, Amano shrimp in that I, that I bought from Swimming Creatures. I put them in on uh, Saturday. They came Saturday. Um, one of them is right there. It's not focusing, but that's, that's it. Um, so anyway, there wasn't much else to eat. So no wonder they did such a great job. So it occurs to me here, I've got, I dumped 10 Amano shrimp in here. Um, uh, and they've got a lot of other places to scavenge. It's going to take a lot longer than the two or three days for them to clean this stuff up, assuming they clean this stuff up at all. So we shall see. We'll keep an eye on them. But anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to put in there. And I'll put the links to uh, uh, the Dan's video comparison that he did. And you can make up your own mind. But, you know, I just thought uh, seven fifty dollars a piece for those shrimp was a little excessive. And I'm not sure. I'm guessing there. I said that before, too, already, that I'm guessing there's shipping involved as well. I don't know where he does 
free shipping, if at all. So I'll have to go back and look. And, uh, and then if you go watch his video, you can go to his site and you can go look as well. But anyway, that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, and I will uh, make follow-up videos uh, to keep keep uh, keep y'all posted on how these amano shrimps do. There, he's in there. It it's in there feeding, and I don't know if it's just you know nitpicking, picking up all the little particles that shrimp do, or if he's actually eating bits of that hair algae, which would be really cool. I'd love to get rid of this stuff. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to go about that because it, it pops up all over the place and I really don't like it. Not my favorite plant. Also, let me add uh, this water that came out of the tank will be uh, used to water the house plants because it's tank water and it is nutrient rich. So let's go for that. And then, like I always say, my uh, filter's pulling off the wall there, a the little interior filter or internal, whatever you want to call it. Oh, speaking of which, there is some more of that hair algae right here on this. Uh, there's a big wad of it there. Look at that. I'm just gonna kind of help them out a little bit. This is that stuff. Like green steel wool. I really don't like it. Um, but anyway, um, thanks for looking.